Heavenly Father, there is no other name apart from the name Jesus. Our salvation is found in the name Jesus. Our provision is found in the name Jesus. Our victory we find in the name Jesus. Dear Father, we pray that this morning as we have confessed that there is no other name given to us that by which we can get saved. Only the name of Jesus. And when it is still called today, that dear Father, we can appropriate our salvation. Oh, we want to thank you and to give you praise. The name Jesus. The name Jesus. The name Jesus. Minister to us, Lord God, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. You may get seated. You may get seated. We want to appreciate the worship team. That was powerful, very, very powerful. Maybe one of it is because we are a little more, so the echo is a little more. Can you imagine how it will sound like when all of us have come back into the sanctuary? So for those that are outside in the tent and in the corridor over there, goja tu, kidogo tu, na itakuja. Um... I, I had not gotten the message um, because uh, I never followed what Uhuru was saying on Wednesday. So yesterday, when I came here for G12, I, first of all, when I walked in, I got confused because they had arranged the hall. But I thought, um, maybe wamesukuma, because we normally meet there, wamesukuma uku, but I was wondering, kwani ule alisukuma alizipanga? But then I was told by the pastors, hey, we uku sikiza? Nama kwani kulisomwa nini? Hey, to that! Wow. And it feels warm. However, we are not out of the woods yet. Take care of yourself. Nikono? Oga. Nikuoga ama nikunawa. Whichever. Kuoga ndiyo naona ndiyo inatokea vizuri. Oga mbaka unawe. Distance. Chunga. Weji chunge. Sinili kuambia siku moja sirikari ya ikufagi na iraragi kwa hospitali. Wale wanararaga ni sisi. So we take care of yourself. We will try our best so that we, we don't uh, so that we come out of it. Ata, ata harusi imeongezo wa watu wachache, so wale wako na tuharusi walikuwa mefinya watu sana, fungwe ni kidogo tu, tu, watu wengine watatu wakuja wakule hiyo pirao yako uh, and so on. Ata mazishi tumeongezo wa watu wachache uh, anyway, me I'm looking forward to a time that this will be opened completely for for all of us. Millicent Karibu. Millicent was in and out. Alikuwa meenda live kidogo. Lakini kwa sababu ulikuwa mkimuona area, hamukufikiria alikuwa live, alikuwa live. Lakini amekam, amerudi. Na wengine tulimumiss sana. Oh, kumbe sio sisi tu. Wow. Have you ever come here and you don't know where to start? You are wondering, which is the best way to enter? Utaingiria upande gani alafu nakuta aziingiriki? So, Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Nimeona pale pa kuingilia. Mimi naitwa Kimani na ninampenda Yesu. Yaani nimeokoka. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Neno letu la leo, our word is coming from the book of Joshua. We are still picking the book of Joshua. There is a lot of excitement. Actually, chapter 5, we have uh, st stood there for a while. We are still in chapter 5. And today I feel this is my message. The other one I preached was yours. If you got it, it was yours. But this one is mine. But to tell you the truth, that island in Rubiri last Sunday, Likua Yangu. 
Hizi jumbe ni zangu. I hear what God is telling me. And I tell you what he is telling me. He, he wants me to change. And so I tell you also that you can change. There is no preacher who preaches to others. The ones who preach to others are professionals only. But if you are called of God, any sermon you preach, you are preaching to yourself first before you tell others what God is saying. Joshua chapter number 5, verse 13 to 15. Joshua chapter number 5, 13 to 15. And from this verse 13, it goes on until we conquer Jericho. But these two, three verses have, uh, they, they, they have what it takes for us to conquer the Jerichos that you and I have. And all of us have our Jerichos. And it came to pass when Joshua was by Jericho that he lifted up his eyes and looked and behold there stood a man of against him with his sword drawn in his hand and Joshua went unto him and said unto him Are thou for us or for our adversaries? And he said No, but as captain of the host of the Lord I am, I am, now come. And Joshua fell on his face to the earth and did worship and said unto him, What saith my Lord unto his servant? And the captain of the Lord's host said unto Joshua, Lose thy shoes from off thy foot, for the place where you are in is holy. And Joshua did so. Oh God, speak to us and speak to me. I've entitled what I'm sharing with you, The Leader Meets the Lord. And if there is anything that you and I ought to do, if you are in any leadership position, whether a husband or wife or whatever position you hold or a church elder or a pastor, is to meet the Lord. What can change your life is meeting the Lord, is having an encounter with the Lord. And Joshua lifted up his eyes. What was he doing in Jericho? Remember, they were going to fight Jericho, but in the middle of the night, he goes out and he's found himself in Jericho. Maybe we'll discover what he was doing. A number of things that I, I feel the Lord is going to help us to understand is, first of all, to get a picture. What is the picture we are seeing here from those uh, verses that we have read? And what is God saying to us? One of the things that I want you and I to know and carry along as we continue, any battle that you have won, you have first won it in your mind. You, you don't go to fight fast, but you have to strategize, you have to fight it, and when you have won it, is when you go out. I know a lot of us go out, and then you are asking when you are in the battle, Sasa vita inapikanago namnagan, you will lose. But from as you start your journey, you are going for war, you prepare yourself earlier. Either you want to surrender before, or you want to go and fight the battle that God has called you to fight, you are going to win those battles up in your mind. Fanya hivi, hapa. If you lose hapa, that ata uko utaenda kupotaza. So there are people who lose here. And even if we think they are winning, if they have lost here, whether it is in business, whatever it is, they have really lost. So we see a couple of images or things that can help us. The first image that we find is in verse 13. The image of a shepherd image of a shepherd and it came to pass when Joshua was by Jericho that he lifted up his eyes and looked Joshua was at Jericho what was he doing at Jericho the image we find here is of a shepherd but number one of a shepherd is the burden of a shepherd Joshua was the leader of the people God himself had chosen him for that position when the Lord called Joshua to lead Israel the Lord gave Joshua a very precious promise. Joshua 1 and verse 5. The Lord said the following. There shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. I will not fail thee nor forsake thee. Now this is Joshua. God had said that to him. No man can stand before you. And verse 13 tells us 
he sees a man before him and there is a promise I, I don't know whether you carry your promises with you because if you don't carry your promises with you you will be shaken by even madhara ara, you know very shaky shaky things but if you carry the promise that God gave me a promise that this mountain will have to be removed I'm going to to get victory here and victory there then you go on to your victory so we see the shepherd's burden on the basis of that promise Joshua he although he assumed the leadership he has now to do a certain things but since the time he, he, he got the leadership he did a few things number one he led them over Jordan number two he led them to obey the law of the Lord number three or whatever number it is he led them in observing the Passover another point he also led them to a place where they were ready now to begin their battle into Canaan but where is he on the eve of the battle he has gone out first so that he can spy the land he has gone out first so that he can see what kind of battle is he going to fight he has gone out first so that when he tells the people remember it is two three million people those are many people and you're going to fight a battle you need to have a strategy and Joshua knew he needed a strategy so he was walking around and he finds himself in Jericho but the Bible says he lifted up his eyes and looked now the question I ask myself what was he doing before he looked he looked up he was down aki chora ni mchoro kwa sababu ukichora mchoro uchoraki ukiangalia juu so yeah na chora pale you know my team is called liverpool and we might beat manchester united you guys today i'm just kidding i'm just saying but you know coaches are very interesting because coaches at Tasca, team yetu ya Tasca. Walipolimwa nyingi na waenda wakalimo zingine, coach anasema, "We saw their mistakes. We are going to munaenda tena mnalimwa." Or for the for the sisters, our ladies team. It's is powerful. Inapiga watu wa Sudan 8. Inakuja tena yaongeza zingine 7. He? Paka unashidwa si mgawie Kenya team. But what I'm saying is that a coach sits down, plans, and it is like he knows what the game will look like, he knows what you're going to do, he looks at a video of their team, and he, he kind of identifies the weakness that there was. And I think Joshua was doing the same. He was busy. He was busy drawing how he's going to win the battle. But he lifted up his eyes and looked. So Joshua had bowed, closed his eyes maybe, in prayer. Maybe Joshua had gone and he was one of these people who, when you have a battle, the first thing you do, you pray. So he had closed his eyes maybe. And when he finishes prayer, he looks up. So whatever position you find yourself, whether you are a coach, uh, uh, planning how you're going to win, or you are a prayer warrior, praying so that God can give you victory tomorrow, whatever it is, by the time you finish prayer, you have to lift up your eyes. And when he lifted up, and I like the prayer part, when he finishes prayer and he lifts up, there is a man there. Blessed be the name of the Lord. If you are a leader, you know. Every leader knows to some degree how Joshua must have felt. If you are a pastor, the decisions you make and the decision I make here in this church and the other pastors affect everybody in the ministry here. If you are even a leader, a, 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 a ministry leader, a, a, a service leader, whatever decision you make can affect our congregation. Even a worship leader, the songs they sing. You know, we can sing some songs here, we try to pray, we cannot pray because all what we're saying is fundu wambao. Because you know after you sing fundu wambao, then you should turn the fundu wambao, go to the cross, so that the cross can start dealing with you. So you, there are some songs that you sing and you try. Chukua mikono, fundu wambao, chukua mikono. Chuku, fundu wambao, chukua mikono. Unakuta hakuna, haingi. So there are some songs. <laughs> Thank you, choir. You know. <laughs> Thank you for allowing us. Because when you start saying there is no other God, everybody goes into prayer. So as a leader, you have a response. And I know leaders, as they see Joshua also, they would have felt the same. 
because Joshua was there. The decision you make are profound. If you're a teacher and you're teaching, the statements you make can cause the students' hearts to, to melt. As a parent, the decisions you make regarding your children, what they are called or allowed to and not allowed to, can affect their life, where they will go and where they cannot go, the consequences will follow them. So leaders or leadership comes with great responsibility. And Joshua knows that there is the responsibility to seek the will of God in every matter as a leader that you face. There is the responsibility to make decisions that honor God above all our feelings. There is the responsibility to do everything with the understanding that every decision you are going to do, it is like throwing a pimple or a small stone into the water. There are ripples. So whatever decision you make, there are ripples. So if I'm a preacher, whatever I do, there will be ripples. If I'm a father, if a father fails, the family fails. And I like this. When the mother fails, her children fail. I don't know why that one goes that way. But you see, we were taught by another lady here in the morning that although we, we debated with the Kibera and said, Ata sisi tunasikiza kakidogo, wakati ya muko, nisi tunajua yyo sauti ni ya mtoto gani, you know? But the point she brought was, <laughs> akisikia wangoi ya kilia, atawacha joni pale, joni atashindwa, umekimbia kwenda wapi? Which is also true. Wato, wamama, mtoto wa kilia na analia na wengi kule, baka wazawa nauliza, umeenda wapi? Usiki na ni analia? Wapi? Kwa zao si tunasikia kerele kubwa. When a mother fails, then the children fail. When a Christian fails, there is no testimony of the good, uh, the good that God has been doing. So sometimes people will understand your motives, other times they will not. But the end of the day does not matter what people think. All that matters is what does the Lord think. Because we will face him, not them, with the decision we make in this life. So then every one of us, the Bible says in Romans 14 verse 12, every one of us shall give an account of himself to God. If you have been placed in a position as a leader, take it seriously because the Lord also takes it seriously, the position that he has given you. And there are many scriptures that we can look to which talks about the responsibility that God has given us, which is critical and crucial for us where God has placed us. So the first one we see is the shepherd has to do something because as a shepherd, God is calling him to go out and know what is happening with his sheep. And as he goes, because he has a burden, Joshua had a burden. He is trying to plan so that he can tell the others what to do. The second thing that I find in the shepherd is the shepherd is brave. Every shepherd is brave. Unless the shepherd ni wako pewa mshahara. Akisikia umbu wa mwitu, anawacha kondo na mbuzi. But if you are a true shepherd, like David, you will fight whether the animals or people. You will resist that nobody will take the animals that you have. And so as Joshua meditates and contemplates the upcoming battle, he sees an identified man standing nearby with a sword drawn. And you see, when the sword is drawn, all what it means is battle. There is battle. There is battle. So it is this picture of this man who is already for fight. Joshua does not hesitate. He wakes up from prayer or he wakes up from drawing how he's going to fight and he is ready to face that man who is ready for battle. So when Joshua sees the man first, he says, okay, I see he wants to threaten Israel. I have to go and fight him. The instant within him arouses him and he wants to defend the people he left behind. Joshua had a burden. But he wanted to go back with the children and tell them, I have fought their commander. I have fought. The battle is already won. But he is also consumed with the protection. He wants not only to fight but also to protect. And those are the characteristics of the marks of a true leader. Regardless of the area of their leadership. The pastor, 
If a pastor will not defend his congregation when it is under attack, he's not much of a pastor. He's just a hiring. If a church leader who will not defend his church, will not defend his church, he's not much as a leader. A husband who will not defend his wife, or the father who will not defend his children, is not much of a man. The mother who will not defend her children is not much of a, 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 a mother. So that is the situation we find this man of God. Brave, he wants to go and fight this man. Brave, he wants to go and fight this man. It's like he remembers, or he has an intuition in himself of Ephesians 6, verse 10 to 13, where the Bible says, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wills of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of the Lord, that you may be able to stand in the evil day. And having done all this to stand, I think here Joshua says, I'm ready. I'm ready. So we see the image of a shepherd. He has a burden. Number two, he is brave. And I pray that God is going to cause any one of us that God has given us, whatever leadership we are, to be brave and to have a burden over the responsibility that God has given us. But we move very, very quickly from verse number 13 to 14. We'll read both those two verses so that we can see the image of the sovereignty of God. You remember I spoke about sovereignty of God here, a series and so on, because God is sovereign. There are things that he does, sometimes you wonder. And he does it in his own way because he's sovereign. So we see the image of the sovereignty of the Lord. Verse number 13 and 14. And this is what the Bible says as we read together. And it came to pass when Joshua was by Jericho that he lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, there stood a man of against him with his sword drawn in his hand. And Joshua went unto him and said unto him, are thou for us or for our adversaries? And he said, Nay, but as captain of the host of the Lord, I am, am, am I now come. And Joshua fell on his face to the earth and did worship and said unto him, What says thou, Lord, unto his servant? The first thing that we find about the sovereignty of the Lord is the Lord's posture. How is he? How is he? When Joshua encounters this man, he said, he, this man is said to be standing with his sword drawn at his hand. I normally say, the battle is not mine. The Lord of hosts is already there with his sword drawn. I, I know you don't see him, but I don't have to see him. I need to believe him and have faith in him. Even the battle that I'm going through, the Lord is already, sword is already thrown. Vitali imetangazwa. And he is there. Who is he? He is the Lord of hosts. Yeye yeah, ndiye commander wa jeshi lake Mungu. Kuna jeshi juu ya maisha yako. Kuna jeshi juu ya maisha yangu. Ndio ninataka kupigana hii vita. Ndio nimejitayarisha. But there is the host. There is the Lord's host is ready to command, is ready to fight because the battle belongs to the Lord. The sword is drawn out. That is the posture of our God. He is ready. It is the picture of person ready for the battle. This is not the image of some passive observer events. This is the image of someone who is ready to make something happen. The Lord is ready to make something happen. Your life, God wants to change it. There is a battle he's going to win for you. But you have to be willing and ready. May the Lord come and energize Mchoro Wako Avita. May the Lord come and energize the war that is before you. May he come and declare to you that the battle is not yours, but it is the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. He was ready to do something. I'll just remind you today that God does not react to events and take place in, which take place in our human world. He is not sitting in heaven waiting to see what, we'll do, what we will do first so that he can decide how to respond. No! He is in control of both the actions and the reactions. He's already, he already knows what we are going, 
what, what we are going to do. And he's already made his plan accordingly. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Isaiah 46, 9 to 11, the Bible says, Remember the former things of old. For I am God and there is none else. I am God and there is none like me. Declaring the end from the beginning and from ancient of times the things that are not yet done. Saying my counsel shall stand and I will do all my pleasures. Ooh, I like that. Calling a ravenous bird from the east. The man that executed my counsel from a far country. Yes, I have spoken it. I will also bring it to pass. I have purposed it and I will also do it. This is God. Awesome. Awesome God. Remember, he is trying to remind us that he is able to do those things. He is able to do those things. He will bring it to pass. He has proposed it and he will do it. Ephesians 1 and verse 11. In whom also we have obtained an inheritance being predestined according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will. He is working. Nobody can... God is not surprised. I said again, God is not surprised about Corona. He's not even surprised that Uhuru said we can have to that because he, he knew all this. He is not shaken. It is the sovereignty of God. The posture of God as far as his sovereignty is do you know he knows the president that will be president 2022? Don't you think he does? So, and he also knows the MCF of your village. Maybe you think you do, but he knows. Oh, I, I love that God. That kuna vitu. Ata wachambue wachambue. Kuna vitu hawajui. Usidanganywa na umati wa watu. Mimi wambia watu hivi. Umati wa watu Nukwambie vile naambia ka watu. T-shirt za UDA, za Kanu, za Waipa, za Fordi Kenya. Iyo igine inaitwa nini? Amani National. Na iyo igine? ODM. T-shirt hizo ziko na wananchi. Na wanachukuliwa wana viongozi wao. Na viongozi uliza, ni nani anakuja? Nikalonzo, wanapewa wote. Wala walikuwa ya jana. Wanapewa yote wanava. We hukuenda. We ulienda ya jana. Na ya juzi ulienda. Si walikuwa meja. Alafu wanasema drama ianze. Leta tatu za waipa tuchome. Wanaleta tatu za waipa zinachomwa. Leta za UDM mbili tatu hapa tuchome. Yani mtu anakuja na toa hiyo na anaikanyanga. Ati anavalishwa ingine. Haku valishwa. Ilikuwa mewekewa hapa tayari. Wale watu wanatakiwa kuwa confused ni wewe. He? Na hiyo mkutano likuwa na watu wengi? Wapi? Sini mekusaidia. Na hiyo ni bure tu. Siku watakuja hapa zima mandi utaona. Kwa sababu wengine wazima mandi unawajua. Di utaona huyu alikuwa na ODM. Tena ameva waipa. Sasa ameva amani. Sasa... Na atakuambia akiwa wazi atakuambia. Kuna uchaguzi moja ulikuwa moto hapa Kenya. Na hata mimi nilikuwa nimebeba kofi ya mbili. Kwa gari yangu na watu wangu. Ili tukiingia Kariobangi. Tunavaa ya watu wa Kariobangi. Ili tuweze kwenda airport. Upiti. Ha? Mukirudi hivi hiyo hiyo nayo usipite nayo hapa ukienda kedhurai ati unaenda sukari. Gari yako itachomwa. Kwa hivyo, hiyo unaweka chini, unaweka ingine. <laughs> Be as wise. Hata wakikuletea tisha tuweka. Aya. Psalms 1, 15 and verse number 3, 1, 15 and verse 3 says, But our God is in heaven. He has done whatever he has pleased. Yani hata ukimwana yuko binguni. Amefanya yote. Yanao mpendeza. These verses and many others. All what they are trying to tell us is God is sovereign and he is at work. He is not resting. Number two about his sovereignty is the position, the lost position. When Joshua encountered this man, Joshua does not know who he is. So he asked him. 
at thou for us or for our adversary? The man's answer must have taken Joshua by surprise. And I like this. The man says, no. But as the captain of the Lord's host, am I now come? In other words, he's saying something to Joshua. I did not come to take sides. I have come to take over. Amen. You didn't get it. There are some of you here. Oh, the, 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 Lord's, the, 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 the Lord of hosts. He, uh, he has shown up. He is telling you, I'm not for you nor against. But you're not hearing what he's saying. I want to take over. The Lord wants to take over your battles. He wants to fight the battle for you. He has come. Now, you, know, you need to know that. Not just the posture, but the position. This guy is not coming at Tikusaid. And I said, Nanani. I said, Namutu. And I'm a baby, me, 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 No wonder the next thing that Joshua does, and I end at Chini. And I pray that God would help us to go down. We need to go down. Yes, the battle is fierce. But the Lord is telling us, I'm not for you nor against you. I have come to take over. Won't you allow him to take over? Joshua humbled himself immediately. He went down and worshipped him. He went down and worshipped him. The answer tells us exactly who this man is. It is none other than the Lord Jesus Christ himself. It is the pre-Bethlehem appearance of the Lord. This is not the first time the Lord had appeared to many others. He appeared to Hagar in Genesis 16. He appeared to Abraham in Genesis 18. He appeared to Jacob in Genesis 28. He appeared to Moses in Exodus 3. He appeared to Gideon in Judges 6. He appeared to Isaiah in Isaiah 6. He appeared to three Hebrew uh, uh, children in the book of Daniel chapter 3. Chapter 3. He appeared to Daniel, uh, Daniel chapter 6. He appeared to the prophet Zechariah. Zechariah 1. You know he has been appearing and he has appeared to some of you. Even in this generation and this time, he has appeared to some of us. He has said the battle is not yours. Some of the battles you gave him, you know, he won them for you. He won them for you. And even what is remaining, give it to him. You know, I normally say, if God helped me get 100 shillings, when I needed it, even when I need a thousand, heart a sweat. <laughs> Where Daktari Okupoa na mutu miyamoja Sahi Pana miyamoja ni kidogo Hebu nitafute pesa Nipatie Daktari Ini akumpa congratulation Ampe para Daktari Sasa Daktari Unafikiria nilikuwa na elfu moja tukwa mfuko Siwezi kukupatia kama ilikuwa moja. And it is the same thing about our God. When he gives us, he has more left. He says, silver and gold is mine. Cut on a thousand hills are mine. So if you have two cows, don't pride yourself. Atete na ngombe. Niko na ngombe. Na umepewa tatu tu. Kijiji yote lazima wajue. The one who gave me 100 shillings, he can give me a thousand without a sweat. Is that the God you serve? Yes. If that is the God we serve even in the tent, we need to give him praise. We serve a God who is able to do much more. Wow! Hey! Kivira, alie kupaiyo suti atakama ni poa. Kuna zingine nyingi ya diwacha. Hey! Na unana vira mevaa katai kare. Kazi. Na aliwacho wana tuingine tuingi. Na kuna mtu wakipewa hiyo tu. Anaringa nayo, mbaka itapasuka, kwa sababu mesawa walitoa wapi. Mimi nimejua siri. Alie nipa ni mungu na amebakisha zingine. Sovereignty of God. Oh, I love this. That's why I told you I'm preaching it to myself. Because there is something I'm believing God to do. And once it is done, hata wewe utajua. Itakustua hata wewe. Mimi nitastuka na wewe pia utastuka. Bwana Yesu wa pia sifa. The image of the sovereignty of God. The other thing that we find about this God is the Lord's power. The Lord's power. The sovereignty of God, we are seeing the Lord's power. The Lord in, it identifies himself as the captain of the host 
of the Lord. That is, Joshua could not see the host, but there was a vast army, and Joshua believed him. You know, sometimes, ata tukifika Jericho, na hiyo wao ianguke, nataka uwe ukikumbuka, there was a host. Kulikuwa na captain wa host. Sijui kama walibomoa usiku, our jama, you know, the story we read is this. The Joshua and his people walked around. Walking. Walking. But I want to believe there was some di dynamite that were being placed and laid under every foundation. Apart from where Rehab was. Inawekwa. Kwa sababu, walipika tu kelele. Ukuta zote. The Lord of hosts. May the Lord fight battles for you. May he fight a battle for you. May he come strong. The Lord of hosts. That is his, his name. And you see, the book, the book of Kings tells me that the Lord of hosts aided Elisha. The Lord of hosts came in King, 2 Kings chapter 7 and chapter 19 and chapter 6 and aided the people of God. The same power that came to aid Israel in Jericho and the same power that came to aid Israel in time and time again is the same power that surrounds you today. Our Lord is still the captain of the Lord's host and he still fights battles on behalf of his own people. May the Lord fight the battle for me. May he fight the battle for you. May the Lord arise and his enemies be scattered. These are truths that should remind me and remind you. So we have seen the image of our shepherd and we have seen the image of the sovereignty of God. And then finally, we see the image of a servant. When Joshua realizes just who is standing before him, he assumes the place of servant before the Lord. Yani, immediately, Joshua knew ye ndiyo mtumishi. Joshua's attitude towards the Lord has much to teach us about how we should ap approach the Lord as well. The servant's humility. Joshua realized that he, is to f he, is, he has come face to face with the Lord himself. And he falls down before the Lord to worship. Oh my goodness. We have missed that opportunity. Every time you see the Lord of hosts, go down on your knees, worship him. Go down on your knees and worship him. You see, before you can have victory, you must vanquish you must put everything under you must forget who you are and what you have before you can conquer you must be first conquered yourself be conquered and many today do not do not do what joshua did they don't they live there with some pride and some religious uh, jargon i saw the lord oh my goodness mungu nilimwona See, if God does anything for you, your response should be like Joshua, go down, man, go down. If you want God to do more for you, just go down, just go down. I mean, una ringia nani? By the way, mtu unaeza ringia, ni binadamu mwenzako. Na atakusaidia na nini? Sayo ulikuwa na shida alikusaidia. Alafu unamuringia atakusaidia. Maybe tuseme unamuringia ili umuhudhie. Kuhudhia mudu. Hey. Baskiri yetu ya kwanza. Baba alinunua kwa ART. Nilipoenda karate. Nilitoka nayo kenamba. Baka karate kwa kurino. Si kwa sababu kuna kitu naenda kufanya. Ni kuendesha kuringa nayo kuwacha. Unawacha. Ili ucheza cheza nayo. Unaringa ringa nayo. Unaringia nani? Wale ambao hawana. Sasa kuringia mtu hana. Ata kusaidia na nini na hana. Kwa sababu basikili wezi ringia mtu wakona gari. Ata kuhonga. Ay. 
ati mnaenda na mtu akona viatu na mchanga imekuwa moto alafu anakuambia tika kugera hali ya kugera ile hali ni ni ndira holia mwaki yani ninaziba moto wacha ukanyanga pale nimekanyanga huyo anaweza ingia tu mtu ambaye hana kia atakusaidia na nini na hana so i'm trying to tell people here watu unao ringia hawana <laughs> niliponunua kinanda ya kwanza niligundua mende hawataki bezi kubwa <laughs> kwa hivyo kama ningetaka mende zangu zitembee kwa majirani naweka bezi kubwa inatetemesha flow naona mende wote wameanza safari Akini sasa ni kuambie unaringia wenye mende kama wewe. Ukizima zinafanya nini? I will not continue. Jijazie mwenyewe. A servant heart humbled himself. Secondly, this man also not only humbled himself, he was honest. The Lord makes a strange demand on Joshua. He commands Joshua. Abia Joshua. Toa kiatu. Si Joshua na abudu. Aambi ore ukiruta kiatu. Joshua haweki kiatu peke yake. Hata kale kapanga alikuwa nako kakwenda kupigana kaweka chini. ngine wendo lazima mtoe viatu na vitu ambavyo unapigana navyo uweke chini na kwa sababu si kwa nimekwambia nataka ukitoka hapa hii salmon uendelee uende kwa nyumba yako labda umetishwa na vita unavyopigana ni za kifedha uchukue kipochi chako kwa sababu huko umekuja nako chachi ukiweke chini Wengine ni elimu. Kuna pambana na elimu. Chukua vieti vyako. Viweke chini. Mpatie Mungu. So Joshua ametoa kiatu. Kwa nini anaambiwa atoe kiatu? Na kwa nini anaambiwa atoe kiatu kimoja? <laughs> Why did the Lord just ask for one shoes? The answer lies in ancient custom. When a covenant was made between two individuals in which one person possessed power to keep the covenant and the other didn't. The weaker individual handed over the shoes to the individual that had the power. So when you remove it, unasema kavadhi ege kakatia. I better go limping. But I want him because he is able to maintain and keep my covenant. He is the one that I'm going to give everything. I'm going to remove my shoes. You guys at home you are in a better place. Whatever battles that you are fighting, maybe as we continue in the service you can start war. war. The Lord of hosts wants you to give him that which you cannot keep so that he can sustain it and fight the battles for you, the financial battle, the medical battles that you are fighting. He wants to fight even the marriage battles that you are fighting. He is already there. He is ready to fight it. And he is not alone. There is a host. Blessed be the name of the Lord. So he was honest. I can't. Joshua says, but you can. He removes the shoes. I can't, but you can. He puts battle gear down. I can, but you can. He is ready now for war. May the Lord God our Father help each one of us. Remember what the Bible tells us in Romans 2 of us 1 and 2 as I finish. I beseech you therefore brethren by the mercies of God that you present your bodies living sacrifice holy acceptable unto the Lord which you are reasonable service and be not conformed to this word but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is good and acceptable and perfect will of God surrender it give it to the Lord so that God 
can use them. Give it to him. Renew your mind. Put in the victory song in your lips. And God is going to give you victory. As I said earlier, we start winning the battle. Look at the mirror and tell yourself, I am a winner. And as you leave every morning, tell yourself, I am a winner. Actually, every morning you leave, you say, Lord, I remove my shoes. Every morning. My shoes, Lord, I remove it. I remove it because the battles that I'm fighting today is only you who can help me. Remember, the leader meets the Lord of hosts. May you meet the Lord of hosts today. May you meet the Lord of hosts this week. May you know the battle that you are fighting are not yours. May you know that as he told Joshua, he will never leave you nor forsake you. He will fight battles that you know and the battles that you don't. That is our God. May the good Lord keep you and sustain you and provide for you in Jesus' name. Father, I want to thank you for every listener, both those that are watching us from afar off. Lord God, I pray that today, when it is still called today, May they encounter the Lord of hosts. May they encounter the Lord of hosts to give them victory over all the battles that they are fighting. Because God, we are reclaiming and we are claiming our canon in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's give the Lord praise in the house, shall we? Amen.